Looks like we're live. Hey, live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tabletop Express. This is a channel where we talk about, and in this case, teach board games in a live format. Uh, my name is Ryan Clements. You can call me Squirrel. I'll be the moderator for today's live teach of 18 Chesapeake, uh, but it'll be taught to you by Ryan Espin. How hey. are you doing, Ryan? Hi. Well, yeah. So, yeah, welcome aboard the Tabletop Express to our live teach QA. So, I'm really excited. I'm very excited to teach you, in particular, Squirrel. About yeah, I'm gonna come out and say it. I have no idea how to play. Uh, yeah, HHSD. and uh, <laughs> it's it's been one that uh, I've been excited to teach you, and I am still uncertain if you're gonna like it or not. So, we'll... <laughs> I mean, it is based on my hometown of Chesapeake, Virginia. So, right. You know. uh, also, if I'm not mistaken, 18 Chesapeake is one of the uh, better 18 XXs to start out with. Is that right? Yeah, a lot of people think it's a great intro into 18 XX, uh, myself included, for sure. And this is intended to be a teach. For you, you watching at home, and you watching right next to me, squirrel, uh, about uh, the very first 18xx experience you'll have. This is meant to be dipping your toes into that salty, murky Francis Tresham waters that yes, we call the, the, the 18xx the, world, the swampy place that is Chesapeake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'll be learning it at the same time as chat. And so please chat if you have any questions. I'm sure there's going to be many. Uh, this is not a small game, no. uh, but I will do my best to have Ryan answer them as he goes. And on that note, I'm just going to let you take it away. How about that? Yeah, I'll, I'll start. I mean, so before we don't jump right in, I'm going to go into what an 18xx game is. 18xx games are primarily train stock market train games. So in this game, you will be purchasing uh, stock within uh, different train companies. And this kind of game started in 1974 with Francis Tresham's first h and XX game ever, which was 1829. And since then, the h and XX series exploded with more than 200 games. And there's still a different h and XX title coming out every year. Um, you know, Francis Tresham, the, the late great Francis Tresham is no longer with us, but his legacy does live on with all these 18xx games. Um, and Chesapeake is a fantastic one to learn for your very first one because it's, in, it's designed to be in a very forgiving intro one, but at the same time, it does still have some of the teeth that the, the vets like, uh, vets being the, the, the train vets. Um, in 18 Chesapeake, which by the way, I must say, 18 Chesapeake, if you see right here, this is the rule book. It's a fantastic rule book in case you want to just skip this video. You could read from here, but you're here for the video. Uh, it's designed by Scott Peterson, who is also the owner of All Aboard Games, which published this game. Um, Scott Peterson designed 18 Chesapeake. He designed 18 New England. And he has been a driving force in the 18xx community with a lot of his... Uh, uh, production and if you ever want to check out this game in particular, the only place you could purchase it is all all dash aboard games.com. So let's talk about 18 Chesapeake now. Um, the 18 Chesapeake map, uh, the board is split up into two sections there is the map, which is on the lower half of the board, and to the upper half of the board. Uh, we have the stock market. I don't know if you could see the stock market up here. Yep. But this is all the same thing. So you'll see even my part of my arm is going up. See, dun, 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 dun. It's a shark. Sorry. <laughs> um, so um, how the game is going to work is we are going to be going into a opening private auction phase, followed by a series of stock round. Here, if you go up to the stock market, I'll show you. Uh, we're going to go over to the stock round. And then we're going to be going to the operating round where we'll be running our train. So stock round, we'll be manipulating the price of our of our train companies. And the uh, the map will be what's primarily used for the operating round of the game. OK, so there's two different halves of the game. So let's uh, talk about how the stock market works and how it actually uh, works for owning a train company. Um, in the beginning of the game, uh, we have a bank of money, which the game does come with paper money, but it's strongly recommended that you use uh, poker chips. In this case, I am using Roxley Iron Clays. They're really nice. So just up here. Roxley Iron Clays are super nice. Um, the bank is $8,000. 
And what you do is you figure out how many players are playing and you split up this amount of money across the players. So in this case, let's make pretend we're doing a three player game and we're each gonna get $800 to spend, okay? So I'll just hand out, there's 800, 800 bucks right here. Well, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> and uh, what's gonna go on is starting with the player who has priority deal, which means you go first and you get to hold this cool little crab, right? Um, starting with the player with priority deal, that player is going to decide to either purchase stock in a company or to pass. Uh, and the and the stock round keeps going until all players have passed consecutively in a row. So I'm going to slide this up so you can see a little bit more of the stocks. Um, down below over here, this is the IPO, is what it's called. And this is showing all of the uh, companies that are in the game. Okay, we have the BNO over here, for example, and the Camden and Amboy. And these are all real trained companies at the time. Um, and what you're going to be doing is, let's just say you decided to start first, Squirrel. Um, you could choose to uh, start up a company. And let's say, for this example, we'll do the Camden and the Amboy. Do you know why I picked that? I do not. Because it started in Jersey, and that's where we are right now. Hooray, New Jersey. Yay. Woot, woot. <laughs> so let's say you started the Camden and Amboy Railroad. When you're doing that, you're going to be taking the president's certificate. Okay? Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but it's easier to see compared to a regular certificate. The president's one has two circles, whereas the non-president has one circle. The reason being is because this is worth twice as much as this one. This is 20% of the company, and this is 10% of the company. Um, when you are purchasing a, uh, a particular uh, company's president certificate uh, from the IPO, that means you are starting the company, in which case you get to decide the starting par value of that company. Okay, So Camden Amboy Railroad, you're going to decide where you want to start. I'll let you, I'll let you decide too, Squirrel. Um, the starting par values will be $70, $80, and $95. And what's going to happen is you're going to decide where you want to set your par value on. And whatever price you pick, you pay double. The reason being is because you're buying the president's certificate, which is worth double of the certificate value. So what, which one would you like to do? Uh, let's go 80. Let's go, go 80. Middle. Yeah. So we put one here, 80. Okay. What you're also going to do is you're going to take another one of these station tokens, uh, and you're going to put it right there onto the 80 spot on the stock, stock market. Not only that, you'll be taking the Camden and Amboy Railroad uh, player board right over here. You're going to take two more of these and put them right there and right there. Um, when you do that, you're going, once you purchase this company, you now have 20% of this company. So we take that money out, you get the difference back. And then what's going to happen is there's these two stations, the home station and just another additional station marker. So if you wouldn't mind going to the map board, I'm going to show you where that's going to go. On the map board right over here, you're going to take your starting home station and place it onto the matching icon, in which case Camden is Camden and Amboy starts right over here in Camden. So we place that right over there. The other one just remains here. And in the game, you have the option to place that on the board. So let me set this aside. We've now per go back on over to the stock market and I'll show you. We've now you've now purchased this. Congratulations, Squirrel. You are the president of Camden and Amboy Railroad. Yeah. It's now my turn. And I'm like, you know, I think I want some of this. I like this idea. I'm excited to be a part of it. You want what so, I got? I'm gonna spend 80 bucks from my wallet and put it into the bank to purchase an additional IPO share for myself. So now, Squirrel, you have 20% of Camden and Amboy, and I have 10%. So we are in this to win this together. Um, this is going to repeat uh, these, this uh, purchase of stock price of stock. And I could have chosen, instead of doing that, I could have chosen to start a different company if I wanted to. I could have chosen to just pass, OK? Um, but in this case, I decided to purchase uh, the Camden and Amboy Railroad. And the reason why I did that was so um, 
I am closer to making this particular company float. So what I mean by float is if you'll notice on the player on the stock market board, it says IPO 60% of float and only floated companies are the ones that actually run in the operating round of the game. So in order for a, co a company to run, it needs to be floated. And in this case, it needs to be at 60% ownership amongst the players. So currently you have 20%, I have 10%, that's 30% right over there. We're already halfway there. You can, it's now back to you. You could actually, we'll have the, the dummy player. Let's just say it's the audience. The audience is grabbing this Camden and Amboy Railroad trains. Uh, you are uh, not dummies there, audience, just so you know. Uh, well, don't worry. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> um, so now they have 10%. So now we're already at 40%. Okay. Then we keep it going. You decide to buy another one. You're at 50. I decide to buy another one. We are at 60. So now the company has floated. Okay. Since it has floated during the operating round, which is after the stock round, the Camden and Amboy Railroad will run on its turn. Okay. Um, and what's important to note about that is uh, only the president is the one that's in charge. So even though audience and myself are have some ownership of Camden and Railroad, we are not the primary owner, which means we are not the president. So Squirrel, in this case, you are the president. So when it comes to the operating round, you get to decide the fate of the Camden and Amboy Railroad. Okay, making sense so far. Uh, yes, I did have one question though. Yes. Uh, when you bid on a uh, share, uh, yeah. can you bid for multiple shares on one turn or that's, only one share at a turn? So that's a great question. Um, you can only do one share per stock round turn. Um, how it works is, from your personal supply, you could sell as many certificates as you have, which are these shares, the, the share certificates, and then purchase at most one single certificate from any company that's available in either the IPO or the bank pool. And I'll get to how things get into the bank pool later on. But just know you could sell as many as you want and then purchase. A uh, little caveat in the very first stock round, you are not allowed to sell. Um, it's just poor sportsmanship, so just don't do it. But also, there's a rule to make sure you don't do it. Um, so that was uh, how the sell and buy works for the very first operating round. Now, just to speed up this example, let's make pretend that the stock round is over. And now we are going into the operating round. So before I change, we change the camera, I do want to highlight on this board in particular, uh, actually change to the other map, to the map side, for example, for now. Okay. So over here on this side is this little uh, indicator telling you what particular round you're in. So in this case, we are in the stock round right now. After that's done, we we figure out what phase of the game we're in, which is indicated by this guy right here. So we are currently in the yellow phase. So we are going to be going to the yellow phase and carry out an operating round. And then if we ever get to the green phase, we will go to the green phase and do the operating round. And then if we ever get to the brown phase, same thing. Okay. Um, so the game will, the flow of the game will either be a single stock round followed by a single operating round or a single stock round followed by two operating rounds in succession or a single stock round followed by three operating rounds in succession. So let's get into what you're actually doing on the operating round. And then we'll then things will start to uh, roll, I guess. Right, trains roll? I don't know. Steam along? I don't know. I, I like train games. I know nothing about trains. I know I, I don't like, you know, I, I didn't like them when I commuted into the city. That's for sure. I mean, um, you are on the Tabletop Express, so. Yeah, but that's more of a name. <laughs> um, so let's go over here. Uh, Camden and Amboy is starting over here in Camden. Uh, what's going to go on is on your turn, you are going to do the following in this order. I'm skipping the very first thing, though, because I'll get back to it when we get into the green phase. Um, the very first thing you could do is lay or upgrade one single track tile. So not provided with the game from, but this tray is awesome. And it's from uh, 
Rails on boards. They have a really awesome site where you could actually purchase different trays for your HNXX games. It's fantastic. So I'm using this tray, not included. Go support Rails and boards. They're great. Um, so we're going to identify which tile we can place on here. So if you take a look, I don't know if you could see clearly in this example, but Camden and Amboy has this big circle over here. And that big circle is called a city. Wilmington over here has a small black circle, and that is called a town. Okay. This guy has nothing on it at all. Okay. And then, as mo some spots have no addition, no value, like no value, like I've mentioned before, some of them are going to have a value with a, with a circle, and that's how much it pays out when you run trains through there. And this guy. Some of them have pre-printed values on them. So in this case, Wilmington has 40 bucks on it. That's to indicate that there's like a river on there. Um, Camden does as well, too. Uh, if you go all the way over here, these mountain spots, they're 80 bucks. And the, ish the reason why is when you're laying track, you identify first which kind of track to lay. So in this case, it's a city. So you would take a city one, which looks like this little white circle. And you're going to place it onto the board right there. Um, it's normally free to build on top of a spot. However, if there is a monetary value on that spot, you need to spend that money in the, uh, into the bank. But I do want to talk a little bit about money before I jump in. How is this company paying for things? So I mentioned before, once a company is at 60%, it becomes floated. Um, when it's floated, not only does it get to operate, but it also gets money into its treasury. So in order for money to go into the company's treasury, it needs to be floated at 60%. And then what you do is you take the uh, par value you set it at, which in this case was 80, you would multiply it by 10, and you would put that much money from the bank into the company's treasury. So in this case, here, I'll slide it out so you can see a little example. We have 800 bucks in the company's coffers. Okay. So when the when you're building track on here, it's not coming from your pocket. It's coming from your company's pocket. Okay. So 40 bucks. I'm going to exchange this 100 and I will get 60 back. Whoop. Here's a little, little derailment. Waka waka. <laughs> Um, once you do that, though, your starting home marker will go onto that station spot covering up that white circle. Afterwards, after laying track, you could then place one station marker on the board. So remember, we started off with an additional station marker right over here. So if you wanted to, you could lay it elsewhere on the board. So let's say you did want to lay it on the board. The only place you could lay it on is a place where your current train can reach to. So right now, the only spot that your current train can reach to, if this is your train station, is following up this road north and going right over here to this white circle. Okay. So if you were to do that, you'd put that right there and you would spend the money down below over here, which in this case is 40 bucks from the company's coffers into the bank. And that would conclude that. Now, the reason why that's important is because what you're doing in this case is you're blocking this spot, which means only your trains can run through it. Okay. So I do want to highlight as to how these station markers work in particular. Station markers, uh, whenever you run trains, which we'll get into running trains in just one minute, just know, just imagine, uh, just use, use your imagination right now. Um, if you have an imaginary train going from your train station, you need to, uh, decide you need you can go as far as you are able to with your train and you need to make sure that where you can go to you can either go through or 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 uh or just you know stay in that spot so what i mean there's a better example hang on let's do this i'm gonna create this train right over here whoop i'm just doing some really fun Train stuff right over here. Okay, here's a better example. CNA is right over here. 
And let's say Strasbourg is over here. Okay. If Strasbourg were to take its train from its train station and go down the track, it would end up getting to Camden. But because Camden is considered to be tokened out, Strasbourg cannot go any further than Camden. It can't go to Philadelphia. Camden, however, can go from Camden to Philadelphia or Camden all the way up to Baltimore. Or it could even do Philadelphia, Camden, Delmarva Peninsula, Wilmington, and then Baltimore. And the reason why that's important is because every time you run your train, only you need to have at least one of your station markers present within the run. So in this case, this guy is present during that run. Okay. Doesn't matter if it's the beginning, doesn't matter if it's in the middle, doesn't matter if it's at the end of the run. As long as one of your station markers is represented, you're A-OK -okay to go through. Okay, so at this point, after you lay down track and you decide to put down your station markers, so I'll put that back over here, it's now time to run trains. The issue is, in the very first turn of the game, and some players, you know, just know this right now. This is the, how it goes. It's not very fun. Um, you don't start off with a train before you could run your very first train. So right now, you don't. You can't run any trains. Boo hoo. Um, whenever after that's done, after running your trains, the money you rose from running your trains is going to uh, either be paid out to all the shareholders or it will be withheld within the company's coffers. So that's how you fill up your treasury. Or like I said, you could pay it out. So in this case, let's say there was a connection between these two spots, that's $50 right there. So what you would do is you would figure out how much to spend. So that's $5 a share because 50 divided by 10 is five. So per share, everyone gets five bucks. So Squirrel, since you have three shares, you're gonna get 15 bucks. I have two shares, I will get 10 and the audience will get one, okay? Um, but in this case, there was no payment, there's no withhold. And whenever the, the shareholders don't get paid, the shareholders don't like that, and the stock value depreciates. But whenever the shareholders do get paid, the stock value appreciates? Is that the opposite of depreciates? I don't know. Go with it. It increases, right? <laughs> and that's the thing. There's a constant communication between the oper the operating side and the stock market side. So if you wouldn't mind going to the stock market board. So if that first example happened where I paid out, where sorry, where you paid out, um, us stockholders are very happy. So our value of our stock price will increase from 80 to 85. It will move one to the right. Okay. If the stock value price, if if uh, if if uh, there was no payment after running trains, or even if or, or trains did not run, the stock value will go down one price by going left. Okay. Sorry if I'm using the word down. It will go left. <laughs> uh, is that making some semblance of sense so far? Yeah. If you like it, you're gonna. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna pick up right now. Yeah. Because now we're gonna get into actually how you use these trains. So after you pay out, you then get to buy trains. So go on over back down to the map. So this is the two train. These are the two trains, and they are considered to be the available trains. Okay. These are the three, four, five, six, and D trains, and they are considered to be future trains. Okay. The trains from the future. Um, so what's going to go on is when it's time to purchase trains, you can purchase trains from your company's treasury, pay that money to the bank and take those trains. Okay. The number on the right indicates the cost. So this train, this two train is worth $80. And the number on the left indicates how many stops that train can make, including its starting origin. Okay. So. If you're going from here, from Camden to Philadelphia, that is two spots, okay? If you were going 
back to our example, where it's this, this, and I'll just make it over there. <laughs> if you're doing this guy right over here, this would be one, two, and three stops, okay? So this would be 30 plus 20 plus 30, that's 80 bucks, okay? And unfortunately, you can't do that with the two train, but if you had two two trains, you could do 20 and 30 up here, and then you could do again 20 and 30 down here. So notice we use the same station marker twice, uh, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I play a lot of eight next X for Jonathan. <laughs> and uh, he won the last one. Good, good on you. Don't do that again, though. <laughs> um, okay, so going back to this, um, this two train can run two spots. This two train can run two spots. Okay, so that's how that's how you're actually using your trains. And when you buy your trains, they go into your company's train depot. Okay, in the beginning of the game, you could have only you could have at most four trains. But as the game goes on, the number of trains you could have in your depot decreases. It'll go from four to three, and eventually three to two. Okay, and that'll go on as the game goes on. But how does the game go on? How does that all happen? It happens with the purchase of trains. Okay, so every time a train is purchased, we are getting one step closer to unlocking the next available train. Okay. So let's say all the two trains have been purchased. As soon as uh, as soon as this guy is available, you can purchase it. So let's so in this case, you bought the three. Perfect. We have now gone from the yellow phase, and we are now in the green phase. And then eventually we'll go to the group to four for green phase again. We'll go to five, which is brown. Six is brown, and then D is gray, and that would get you very close to the end of the game. This game, by the way, for your very first time, will probably take four hours. Could be shorter if you have uh, a lot of experienced people. But uh, the the thing about the thing to keep in mind, and that does sound like a very scary number. I'm very very much aware. <laughs> However, the great thing about it is because there's a lot of uh, planning involved. All the players should be engaged at all times, and all players should be keeping an eye as to what their plan is going to be, and then do it. Okay, so you should know what train, what things you want, what trains you want to buy, what what routes you want to run. Okay, try to think ahead as much as you can, and the game will speed up. Uh, this game with experienced players can be under two hours, so keep that in mind. Um, it's really experience. The other thing about trains is, as I mentioned before, as the trains get purchased, um, you'll notice some of these trains have little in, little values under here. It might be hard to see on camera, but this guy says rusted by four. Is it clear if I do that? Yeah, rusted by four, right? So what that means is, what rust means, um, if you notice, this is like a really ancient looking train. And when the first four train, level four train, is purchased, all the two trains that are owned by different companies or just wherever they are get removed from the game permanently. They are obsolete. They've rusted out. Okay. Um, eventually, the same will happen to the three train. When the first six train is purchased, all threes are gone. And it'll happen with the four trains. Once the D is purchased, all four trains will go away. However, the five, six, and D are permanent. They last forever, which is pretty cool. OK, so that's let's put that there. I didn't pay for those trains. I am an awful rail baron. Let me spend spend my money. Um, by the way, in this game, we are absolutely the baddies. Um, there's no sugarcoating that. Just know that it's not. There was not a lot of nice people, but we're nice people now. We play. This is just a game for us. But yes, it's yeah. Anyways, anyways, I digress. I digress. Um, 
after that's done, after you bought trains, it moves on to the next player. And I didn't talk about what player order uh, happen, how the player order happens. So let me show with an example on the stock market board. Stock market, please. So on the stock market board, not only is the company's value indicated on the stock market board, but also the turn order is determined by the stock market board. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm going to add a little more fluff to this. Let's put this guy right over there. Okay. So what you're going to be doing is turn order during the operating round would be determined by the current stock value on the market for the companies. Okay. So in this case, you do highest to lowest values. So you'd start with $95. So that's the BNO. They would be the first player to go. In the case of a tie, which is these two guys, they're both at 80, right? Lehigh Valley and Camden and Amboy are both at 80. Uh, in this case, the rightmost one will go. Okay. Oh, let me add a little more color to this guy. Yeah, this is going to be nice. <laughs> uh, then, so Lehigh Valley will go, then Camden and Amboy, then Strasburg will go. Underneath Strasburg is the Pennsylvania Railroad, and they would go. Okay. So you'd go top to bottom. Once a, once a train company has acted, you are going to take their token and you're going to flip it over to indicate that they're done. Same thing with this guy. Same thing with this guy. For this guy, you'll flip this over, put it underneath. You'll flip this over, put it underneath. And in the case of stock values, let's say this was the case. Let me go back here. Let's say BNO withheld. Let's say Camden. Uh, let's say uh, Lehigh Valley withheld. Camden and Amboy withheld. Strasburg paid out. If Strasburg paid out, oh, let me flip them. I broke my rule. <laughs> um, if Strasburg pays out, it's going to move to the right. But where is it going to go? It's going to fall underneath here. So whatever was existing on top will stay on top. Okay. And then this guy will go and he'll just go right there. Um, that's how the turn order would work. So when it goes to the next operating round, the order will be now B and Ho, B and O, Lehigh Valley, Strasburg, Cam uh, Camden and Amboy, and Pennsylvania Railroad. That's how the turn order will go. Um, we do, we fin, and once that's all done, the operating round is done. In which case, can you go back to the map for me? So since we're in the yellow operating round, we now move on down this guy to this export symbol, which has a yellow slash green train. What we do is we take the top most available train and we look at the color. If it is a yellow or green train, that train is removed from the game. Um, in the case where this is like this, there's no trains in the available ones. That means the top three one gets purchased. All remaining threes go into the available slot. And then eventually, if this was the case, that the operating round ended this way, this four train would end up being removed from the game. All the fours would be moved to the available spots. And because that four train was removed, it's considered to be purchased, in which case the twos rust. Very sad for the twos. So there's a lot in tempo in this game. There's a lot of thought into, I need to make sure my company doesn't uh, doesn't flounder, that I don't lose those trains. Or I need to make sure some other guy I could dump this company on. And let's talk about that now, back into the stock round. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, this is the real mean part. Now, you might think it's exciting running trains and all that, but part of the fun is finding other players and suckering them into your companies and dumping on them or trying to make sure that your company is fully purchased out. Okay. So let me flip these back over. Let's say in this example, Squirrel, since you're the president of Camden Amboy, let's make pretend that you had for two trains, okay? You're at the max of all the trains. 
And not only that, but you're dead broke with the treasury in there. If you were the first player, so if you, uh, if it's your turn right now and you want to actually um, sell shares, you could sell all shares in a company or multiple companies. So let's say you owned Camden and Amboy and you also own BNO. Okay. Uh, so in this case, let's just do this. Yeah. Let me get that guy and this guy. Yes, perfect. Okay. Let's say this was the case where you were the president of the BNO and you also were the president of the Camden and Amboy. And if you remember in our example earlier, I had two shares in Camden and Amboy. The audience had one share in Camden and Amboy. Okay. What's going to happen is if you want to sell shares of your Camden and Amboy, you could sell as many shares as you're able to. And let's talk about the limitations because <laughs> there are some. <laughs> um, starting with uh, starting with with uh, with you, let's say you had a priority deal, and I'll get into how you get priority deal in a minute. Um, Camden and Amboy, you want to sell your shares off of Camden and Amboy. You could sell all three of them. From your supply, you'll get 75 bucks per share. So 75 times three is 225, right? Yep. Cool. Because you sold three shares, they're going to go into the bank pool. I have two shares. So this certificate, this president certificate, replace, replaces my two certificates. So I'll put those into the bank pool. I am now the president of Camden and Amboy. And the stock value drops per certificate that was sold. So it's now from 75 down one, two, three to $60 a share. Yikes, that hurt. So that's when it goes down. That's when it goes down. Yes. And it, it can go up too. Yeah. Um, so it can go up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. And uh, BA start. <laughs> <laughs> um, so because he sold shares there, that's cool. Now I'm stuck holding the flag and I want to sell it, right? I don't want to hold this, this company, this company's trash and the next four trains is going to come out and it's going to rust all these twos. So what do I do? I try selling it. The problem is I have 20% ownership of this company and the audience has 10% ownership of this company. So if I do decide to sell out of all my Camden and Amboy, I cannot because there's no other player that has 20% or more and can exchange my president's certificate with them. So I'm stuck holding this flag. And they're, but they're not stuck. They could sell it. <laughs> and they sold it. They get 60 bucks. And this drops down from 60 bucks to 50 bucks. Huzzah. That's train games for you. <laughs> Would they be able to sell if there was no place for the disc to go down? Oh, so they can still sell. And if there's no place for the disc to go down, it's it's what's called ledged. So it doesn't go down any further. So if they were selling at 50, uh, they would sell as many as they can for 50, and it would stay on there. Okay. The other thing to note, though, is that the bank pool itself has a limit. The bank can hold at most... 50% of a company, okay? So in this case, there's already 40% here. So even if there was, uh, it, you know, even if there's no room right now for me to to do this. So that sucks. That really, really sucks. Um, and I'll tell you why it sucks. Because when it comes down to the operating round and these trains go away and there's no money in the company's treasury, the you're you legally the the trains are are, are uh, board game legally required to have a train at all times on them so in this case i need to purchase a train so i'm either purchasing from either, one of two places if i have another company of mine that has a train i could buy it from that company that i own or if that's not option if that's not an option or if you don't want to you would spend the money from your own pocket your presidential pocket 
So, and that's one of the two ways this game will end. I didn't even mention how the game ends. The game ends either when one player becomes bankrupt, which probably won't happen in your first play of 18 Chesapeake. Don't worry. Unless you're playing high player count, in which case it could happen in your first game of 18 Chesapeake. So be careful at six players. Um, but the more likely case of the game ending is when all the money, if you want to go to the map for a second, if you all $8,000 is gone from the game, which you might be thinking, yeah, no wonder this game takes four hours. But let me tell you, when those heavier trains come out, this money flies. It flies. It flies, flies, flies. Okay. And the player with the most money at the end of the game wins. And all the shares you have in the game get uh, get get uh, cashed out. And then you count up your total. So you, you're going to have more than $8,000 in total amongst you guys, uh, amongst the, all the players, likely. Um, so let's go back to the stock market just really quickly. There's some things I did not touch. That, there's some nuances I did not touch on that I will touch on right now. Okay. Uh, give me one second. I just need to put down this guy right here. I'm going to put down these just for the explanation of the rules. I'll slide this guy up. Great. Okay. Let's talk about purchasing shares again. As I mentioned before, you could purchase shares from the IPO. If you're buying from the IPO, the price of a share is equivalent to the starting par value of that company. However, if you're buying shares from the market, the bank pool, it is the price of that is equal to whatever value it is in the stock market. So you could buy Camden and Amboy for 80 bucks, or you could buy Camden and Amboy for 50 bucks. Okay. Um, in terms of ownership, you could only have at most. 60% ownership of a company. That's it. Once you're at 60, you're capped out. You're done. Finito. I don't know. Whatever. You're done. Um, not only that, but you are limited to the amount of certificates, uh, the amount of certificates uh, you, you have. Okay. And that's determined by the player count. Um, in a three player game, which we're doing right now, it's 20 certificates. And by certificates, I mean single pieces of paper so these are certificates this is two this is a single share right no this is a double share this is a single share these are two certificates though even though they're totaling 30 percent okay uh that number is represented on the board correct on the stock market board in the middle is that right? um so it is it is for some degree so in this case i'll show you the bank pool can only have at most 50 percent ownership of a company um the certificate limit is on here you're correct yeah there's a certificate limit the uh ipo float is over here and at most you can have 60 percent of a company which i do not see reflected on this board but just know you can have at most 60 percent of a company you can't have 100 percent ownership of a company uh at least in this 18xx game you cannot however there's some nuances even further um, these red spots just indicate starting par value. There's helpful there for you, but this yellow area is important to know. Any stock in the yellow zone does not count toward your certificate limit. So I said your limit was 20 certificates at a three player game. The CNAs though, don't count towards that certificate limit. So you could end the stock round well over 20 certificates. Okay. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, and if the if it if the price ever does get out of here, um, you need to pay it immediately. In the uh, uh, you need to pay you need to sell the you you need to sell down to your certificate limit as soon as you're able to legally in the game. So in this case, um, you could sell if you're at 25 of over 20 and you're back in the stock round, you must sell five shares before you can actually do anything, and then you go back to purchasing. Um, some other things to note too, this stock market, which always reminded me, by the way, of like those notepads as a kid with the multiplication tables in the back, you know, I don't know. It's just me. <laughs> um, 
I, I do want to talk about how things move across this stock market now that you sort of have some semblance of the game with the operating round and the stock round going together. Um, if you want to go to the right, when it's time to pay, run trains and pay out, you move it one to the right. No matter how much you pay, you, only, you always move it one to the right. If you don't pay out to your shareholders, either because you withheld or you just couldn't run any trains, you go back one. So if you're at 85, you go back to 80, okay? For every certificate that is sold in uh, the stock round, or not even the stock round, there's another way you could sell trains too. Uh, for every certificate not sold, um, this stock value will drop. And if it can't drop any further, it'll stop, okay? And if you're paying out and you're at this far rightmost area, you'll notice these arrows. That means, hey, instead of going right, you go up. Okay. Not only that, on the left hand side, doop, if you're over here and you, you withhold, you go down because <laughs> you can't go left, but you can go down. Lastly, let's say all the players had ownership of a company. So in this case, the BNO was owned by all of the players. That means at least, you know, that, that could all be all three of us. So let's say, uh, Squirrel, you had 60% and the audience had 40%. What's going to happen is at the end of the stock round, anything that's completely held by players will go up one in value. Not only that, if you're already at the top, you can't go any further up. You just stay. You don't get that bonus. Was that your question? That was your question. No, okay. <laughs> um, okay. Not very thorough so far. Yeah, yeah, and and and, uh, you know, I, I do I do like thorough. He's like he's a good guy. Um, <laughs> if anybody else has any questions, though, please feel free to ask. Yeah. Anytime. Um. Okay. So that is prime. That is primarily stock round. Let me just touch back base onto the operating round. If you wouldn't mind going back to the map for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I did mention about running trains. So now on your second turn, when it's time to run an operating round, you will have trains to run, right? Because you purchased them in the previous operating round. So in this case, I have these four two trains. Okay. I want to talk about nuances of running trains. So I could run this two train from here to here. So that's 20 and 30. That's one two train used for that track over here. That's 50 bucks. I want to use this, this two train again. I cannot use the same piece of track for another route I'm running. So even though I'm using a different train, I can't use the same track. Okay. Think of these trains as like big giant trains on single rails. Okay. So, the, so yeah, you can have two trains run at once on the same. However, you can use the same spots for different trains. So in this case, I can do CNA down here to Delmarva for a total of 20 plus 30. It's 50 bucks. Okay. So in that case, that's 50. That's 100. Okay. Uh. I want to show you other things you can't do. Um, let's say that, give me a second. I'm going to show you a better example. Huzzah. And I'll get into how you do this upgrading thing in a minute. While you're setting up, uh, Chris Barrows had a question. Hey, uh, Chris He's the Barrows. conductor of this channel, by the way. Yes. Um, he said that you mentioned length of game, uh, like the time for the game. When you're more experienced with this genre and this game, what would you say the runtime is? The runtime could be two hours. So good question. Good question. Um, so let's go into this example right here. If you are running a train over here on Camden to Philadelphia to this spot, you can't go back to Camden with the same train. So if I'm using, you know, one, two, three, four, using a four train, I can't go back to Camden with that one. You can't use the same train to hit the same spot twice. 
Make sense? Great. Um, that's one of the nuances about running trains. The other thing. Are you allowed to stop early? You are allowed to stop early. So you don't need to run the full thing. Uh, let me do this one. Yeah. You might notice some of these red areas. These are off-board locations. Okay? So if you are running a train to an off-board location, you are able to. However, once you hit that off-board location, you can't come back out of it. Okay? So this one is taking you to New York City. This one's taking you to Pittsburgh, Norfolk, and West Virginia Coal. That's what that's doing. Um, so... In this case, if I'm spending the if I'm spending the money with this, if I'm running the train with this guy, okay, let's say I'm using my four train, I'll go one, two, three, four. And I can't I can't come out of New York. So once you go in, you don't come out. That's why it's like the little triangle. Okay. Um and how much it pays out changes as the game goes on. So you'll notice. There's a yellow number that says 40, a green one that says 60, a brown one that says 80, and a gray one that says 100. So as the phases of the games change, the values of these cities will increase in price. Okay. And eventually, you might even, and this is great, run a New York to Ohio run, which pays out at most 100, and this pays out at most 100. And you might be asking, how do you do that? The great answer is with running the D train. Um, so you notice all of these have different numbers to, of the number of spots stops they can have. The D, though, runs a single route as long as it can. Ride the D. Uh, I'm going to stop with the jokes now. Um, but but yeah, that's the, the D is just flies out. Uh, OK, that's running trains, the nuances behind it. I'm going to go back now into the phase differences. So when we're in op when we're in the yellow phase, you can only run yellow do yellow tracks. When you're in the green phase, you could either lay yellow tracks or upgrade existing uh, yellow tracks to green. So let me go back and show you. So if I want to upgrade this particular one right here, I need to find one I could upgrade it with. The rule book comes with an awesome, awesome back that shows you what upgrades to what. So in this case, I see, oh, this single white circle upgrades to this one and this one. It might be a little hard to see. Yeah. See, this one, number 57, upgrades to either 14 or 15. But an easy way to do that is just, just you'll, you'll, you'll get to know as you play. If they have circles, you upgrade to circles. If they have dots, or you upgrade to lines, okay? And if they have specific letters, like this says DC, it's for that spe special spot, okay? Double O is for double O. And there's two double O's. There's not seven. Um, and that's the special spots for those. Um, and by the way, I do want to highlight again, these rail on board ones, you could buy them with stickers. So you know where to put things back when you're done. It's so nice. Sorry, rails on boards are the best. Um, okay, so that goes into upgrading track. Now, the reason why you want to upgrade track is because the value is going to increase. So in this case, you could upgrade track for 20 to 30. Hooray, it's, it now pays out more. Um, I do want to highlight some things, though. When upgrading track, you must maintain the original tracks that were there. Okay, So what I mean is, this guy, I cannot upgrade this in this direction because this north to south rail got destroyed. I need to maintain the north and south rail. Okay, And then eventually, when you upgrade it to brown, you still need to maintain everything that was there. So this north to south and this northeast to southwest, I need to maintain that. And you guessed it, upgrade brown to gray, same rules apply. You need to make sure everything matches. And 
How do you know what upgrades to what? Again, friendly reminder, back of the rule book has that. Uh, but as you play this, it'll become more intuitive and it'll make a lot more sense. Does it cost anything to upgrade or place tiles? Great question. So um, to place tiles, it is free unless there's a cost on the board. Okay. And to upgrade tiles, it's free unless there's a cost on the board. So this is free. These are mountains. They are not free. They're 80 bucks a piece. This guy is 80 bucks and has a circle. So it's 80 bucks. And you just put that guy there when you're done. Okay. If I upgrade it, I don't take into consideration what was on there anymore. You, it's a one and done deal. Okay. Um, some of these spots, like Baltimore, for example, starts off yellow and has 40 bucks. So when you upgrade it from the first time from yellow to green, you would just put it on there. Now, another rule about laying track. You can't lay track in illegal spots, which means you can't have track go into the ocean because that's boats. And this is trains. Um, and you can't make them go off board because, uh, I don't know, that's what, uh, I don't know, Canada or upstate New York. Yeah, we don't, we don't go into upstate New York in this game. There's Allentown, right? It's that Billy Joel song. Um, okay, so that's everything for all of that. Um, in terms of lane track, too, you must match what was there, whatever was there. So if it's a blank one, you have to use one of these, or you could use one of these, or you could use one of these. You can't say, I want to add a city here because there was no city there previously, okay? These white ones, same thing. You can't add a blank, uh, a no city one on there, okay? You need to put a city one on there. And these black ones, uh, these are little towns. They're also sometimes called villages or dits. And you must place one of these sideways lines ones on them. And those are considered to be towns. These never upgrade in the game. Just as a keep that in mind for strategy. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's lane and upgrading track. Uh, am I missing anything? I think I got pretty much everything there is about eighteen XX games. In this case, eighteen Chesapeake. Oh. Duh, we didn't talk about how the game begins. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Okay, so before the game begins, I mentioned there's a series of operating and stock rounds, but in the very first, there's an auction round of the game. So let's talk about how the game begins. So there are six private companies in the game, and this is how the game starts. Um, it starts with an auction, starting with the priority deal player. Well, starting with the first player, which uh, the game does come. Oh, I just had it, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's another thing, too. You said you had mentioned how to become a primary deal. Oh, yeah, yeah, I should get to that. I'll get to that actually after this, and then it'll, it'll tie all in. So the game comes with these awesome player order cards because it matters who you sit next to in this game. So what you can do is you're going to shuffle it up. Do -do -do -do. And you'll flip it over, you'll get one, and I get one, and the audience gets one. Hey, audience goes first. <laughs> um, so you would change seating order that way too. So this way you're not remembering, all right, who was one, who was five, who was three. Change your seating order, please. Uh, and please go play clockwise. Um, so the audience will go first, and they get to choose if they want to bid on any of these two three, four, five, or six private companies, or just purchase the very first leftmost one. The price is indicated on the bottom left, and this is either the price to purchase, or for these, it is the what you need to bid on, what you, the price you need to bid. So here, it's a clear example if I just show you how it works. Okay. Let me get the money. All right, so audience is first. They'll go right there. I am second. I'll go right here. 
scroll your third, you'll go right there, okay? Audience goes first, and they want to bid, let's say they want to bid on this Baltimore and Ohio Railroad one. So the price on the bottom left indicates 100 bucks. If they want to bid on it, they need to spend five bucks higher than that price. So in this case, $105, okay? So that we take 100, I'll change this up for a 50, 70, 90, and then five and five. They bid $105, okay? Now, uh, I would go and let's say I bid on the Columbia Philadelphia Railroad. So I will put in 40 right there. And what you're doing too is when you're bidding on these 45, right? Yeah, 45, you're right. When you're bidding on these, it's uh it there's different corners on here. It's you need to put your money and put it on the corner of the board you're on. So in this case, the audience is on that corner. I am on this bottom right corner and you're on this bottom left corner, squirrel. So I'm going to put down 45 on the Columbia Philadelphia Railroad one. Squirrel, you go and you and you want to bid up above me because that's that's what you like to do. So we'll put down 50 bucks right there because you know five bucks over 40 is 50. Okay, that money stays there for now. Um, now it's time for the audience. Okay, and the audience says, you know what? I do want to buy this Delaware and and Raritan. Uh, canal one, so that's twenty bucks. So they spend twenty bucks from their pocket, or is it twenty five? Ah, uh, just twenty. So, but so the very first one, if you want to, so you could buy the 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 very first one, or you could choose to bid five dollars more on the upcoming auctions. Okay, so okay. they buy this for twenty bucks. Cool. Now what happens is this is called a waterfall auction, but how I like to call it is a ripcord auction. So you rip the cord, and now what's going to happen is all the bids are going to happen in order until we get to one that has no bids on it. So uh, in this case, Columbia Philadelphia gets hit up next, and there's no option to buy it. There's a bidding war on this. Now, Squirrel, you're the high bidder on this with 50. I'm at 45. I'm going to increase my bid to 55. Huzzah. Do you want to increase your bid? No, nah, you can have it. I have it. So I take it for 55. Your 50 goes back to your pocket. Okay. Um, the player who last bought something, the player to the left gets to go next. So in this case, I bought that. So the player to my left is you, Squirrel. You now get to decide, do you want to purchase Baltimore and Susquehanna? Or if you want to put a bid on Chesapeake and Ohio, Baltimore and Ohio, and Corn or Cornelius Vanderbilt. And uh, Chesapeake and Ohio, please. Chesapeake and Ohio, you'll do 80 bucks right over there. So we got 50. We got 80 bucks right over here. Okay. So, oh, sorry. It's 85. Oh, you you bought it, right? Oh, no, you didn't buy it because it's there's this one. My bad. Right. <laughs> So we're at 85. Now for this guy right here, uh, we could choose to buy it. Uh, and, and by we, I mean the audience. Uh, they could choose to buy it. So let's say they do buy it, okay? They buy it for 50. They spend the money. And now, since you're the sole bidder on this, you get it for 85. The audience is the sole bidder on this. They get it for 105. And now we're down to Cornelius Vanderbilt. Now what's going to go on is with Cornelius Vanderbilt, it's 200 bucks. That's a lot of money. So not only can you bid or buy, you can also pass. Okay. So um, audience was the last person to buy something with Baltimore and Ohio, which means I get to choose if I want to start with this. So I'm going to pass. Then you get to choose if you want to buy or pass. Let's say you pass for example's sake. Audience passes. If all three of us pass in a row, the value of this drops by, uh, I want to say five bucks. So it goes from 200 to 195 and it continues going now. It continues dropping until one per one, one person purchases it. Um, and this is very important to note because these guys right over here, this money that you're spending, uh, you put that money right into the bank. And when it comes to the green operating phase of the game, I, I talked about 
touching about this earlier. Um, at any time, the president of a company, whoever, where was the active company? So let's say it's back to Camden and Amboy and, and you're going scroll as the president of Camden and Amboy. You could choose to purchase these companies off of yourself. Okay. So you could buy that Chesapeake in Ohio from yourself. And this is a great way of committing embezzlement in 18 Chesapeake, because now what you're doing is you could spend this money and give it back to you from the company's treasury. And the price you can give it back to yourself is equal to, at most, double the asking price on here. So you could do as little as a buck or as high as $160 into your pocket, which is great because then you can use that money for the stock round and you can start up new companies. Make sense? To me, it's a little, little difficult to understand, probably. Um... But that's just me. I don't know about the audience. Well, that's okay. Because um, the one thing to know is these these private companies, they give you basically special powers at the beginning of the game. Um, and they also give you a revenue value. Okay, The player or company that owns this at the beginning of every operating round will get that much money. So while this is in your pocket, Squirrel, you'll be getting 15 bucks per start of operating round from the bank and put into your pocket. And if this belong, if let's say that your Camden and Amboy bought this off of you, and it's now in that company's treasury, they're gonna get fifteen dollars at the start of every operating round. And that's important to note because as the game goes on, there's multiple operating rounds in a row, so that means multiple chances of them getting this fifteen bucks and putting it into their pocket. And that company stays active until. We reach phase five, so the first five train is purchased. In which case, all private companies, regardless of private, regardless of uh, the big boy public companies, or if it's in your personal pocket, all get removed from the game. Okay, so that's how that works. Uh, once a company purchases a private company, it belongs to that private company for the rest of the game too. So if you end up getting B&O, you can't use B&O to buy from Camden and Amboy the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. Uh, the canal, I mean, Chesapeake and Ohio Canal. Um, but when it does come to, and this is the real finagly part of this game that I adore. <laughs> when it comes to time, let's say B&O right over here. Let's say this is the case where there, where this guy has two four trains. And this guy has, uh, let's say they have a, a crappy three train. Okay. They want to buy a less crappy train. They only have five bucks in their pocket. The next highest one is like 500 bucks and they don't have that kind of money. So what they want to do is they want to purchase this train. Since you are the president squirrel of both the BNO and the CNA, you can choose to purchase trains from your other company and put it into this company. So you could choose to buy this Camden and Amboy for any price you want as little as a dollar or as much as whatever is in your treasury, which in this case is $5. But, uh, you know, if it was $1,005, you could spend all of that and that money would go right into here and you would take this guy. Obviously, you overpaid, but the reason why you overpaid is so this guy can do some beefy stuff. And that's, uh, that's, some, that's some train finagling because there's a lot of finagling in this game. <laughs> a lot. Um, and the great thing about this, I do want to harp on this. This game is available to play for free right now online, 18xx.games. Uh, there's no dot com. It's dot games. <laughs> 18xx.games. And on there, you can play for free. You can look me up. My name's Ryan Espin on there as well. You can just send me an invite. I will happily play this with you asynchronously, even live if we could schedule it. Um, because this is a this is a really fantastic way to jump into the 18xx games without shelling the price of an 18xx game. You could just play it and decide if it's for you or not. Now, I did say I'd get back to the priority deal marker, how that's chosen. Um, priority deal is given at the end of the private auction. Whoever bought the last share, the player to the left, gets the priority deal marker which is this awesome crab. When it gets to the stock round, the player with the priority deal marker goes first. Okay. 
Um, and then at the end of the stock round, which means three, all, all the players have passed consecutively, the first player to trigger that pass, so if you passed first, and then I passed, and then the audience passed, we did that consecutively, you were the first person to indicate it, you would have the crab. I give you crab. You take I'm, I'm, I'm always passing because that, that crab is just beautiful. It is beautiful. It's really nice. And a lot of these 18xx games have fun ones. There's a red squirrel in 1882. I got to play that one. I got to play that one for sure. That one's shorter and a lot meaner, but it's it's great. Um, okay. My, my board is destroyed. I hope you guys... <laughs> Hope you guys understood this uh, short one hour, 10 minutes each of 18 Chesapeake. Did anybody have any questions before we do the sign off at all? I think it's just us, baby. Okay. Now, the great uh, news we is we have four you, viewers. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, if you do have questions, you can always put them into the comments below. We'll get to them when we can. Um, you could message us too. You know, there's, there's all that, all that jazz. Um, did I cover everything? There's separate rules for two players. I'm not going to be talking about that in this video. Um, it's just little nuances. Oh, and of course, I do want to talk about the private companies just so you guys know what they do because they are pretty important to indicate. So boop, 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 boop. Uh, all of them say exactly what they do in the back, but just know a lot of them have to do with spaces on the board. So in this case, the Delaware and Raritan Canal blocks a particular portion of the board while it's owned by a player. You see right here, D and R, D and R. So this is blocked while it's owned by a player, okay? This one, the Columbia Philadelphia Railroad, not only is it blocked, but when it becomes the property of a particular co corporation, that corporation can have a free extra build. And when building track, I did not mention this, you need to build from a legal spot that you have connection to, okay? Which, you know, of course, why would you, right? Um, so if I go back to this example where Camden and Amboy is right over here, I can't build this guy right here because it's not connected, okay? That makes some some semblance of sense. Um, and later on in the game, you, you will be upgrading tiles, but every upgrade you do and every tile you lay must somehow increase the value of your corp corporation, which means there must be some additional revenue you're reaching out to. You can't just arbitrarily upgrade a tile, okay? Um, oh, no problem, Brian. Thank you for watching. Um, I do, I think that is primarily that portion of that. And, but, oh yeah, but going back to it, the uh, Columbia Philadelphia Railroad, they get two extra builds for free right over here with these gentle curves and this, this straight right here. And what's important is with that one, not only is it free for you to do it, you could also do it in any direction that you're legal, that you want to. So you don't, you could just connect it like that if you want to. Uh, and that's useful to know because you might want to block out opponents. That's, uh, a good way to do that. The Cornelius Vanderbilt is the most expensive one in the game. And the reason being is because at the beginning of the game, you get to, uh, at the beginning of the game, one of these companies get its president certificate uh, dealt into Cornelius Vanderbilt's uh, pocket. So you're going to take all eight of them, shuffle them up, put one with Cornelius Vanderbilt, and whoever, whatever player purchases that, gets uh, that president certificate and gets to decide right then and there what that starting cap is going to be, what that starting par value is going to be. And they don't need to spend that money to get that president certificate. So I could set it at 95 and not have to spend uh, $190 in my pocket. So it's something to consider. And the reason why it's good too is because it's 200 bucks, which if you bought it off yourself, it's going to be 400 bucks. But that one you actually can't buy off yourself, so I broke that rule. Sorry. <laughs> and then the BNO one, the BNO has a private auction as well, a private company as well, and that one allows you to uh, to get a free BNO stock. So you get the ten percent stock, and it just goes into your into your uh, pocket. But the thing is, you can't set the par value of it. Only the president can do that. So you just have like this dead stock until it becomes useful. 
And I think that is it with this game. Well, thank you very much, uh, Espen. That was a. Uh... I definitely want to play this with you at some point in time. Maybe at the, the uh, 18xx.games that you were talking about. I'd love to teach you on there. It's a yeah. great one. Again, this is my uh, home city. I lived there for about 15 years. So yeah. uh, I definitely wanted to see that. Um, and for the audience, thank you very much for sticking around and watching this teach. I hope you learned how to play uh, 18 Chesapeake along with a general knowledge of 18xx games in general. Um, and when you get the chance, so thank you very much again. And when you get a chance, please take a look at some of the other content that we already have, uh, including we have Creators Corner where we talk to designers and On the Table where we talk about our favorite games of this past month and a bunch of other things too. Um, for example, Espen, uh, speaking of 18 Chesapeake Creators Corner, uh, do tell me what's going on with that. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, um, we are going to have at some point, I, it's either, there's no set date yet but scott peterson of all aboard games and designer of 18 chesapeake and 18 new england which has a whale um is going to be on the channel to talk about 18xx games and uh and and the process of of making those of those games um so we will have him and we also are going to have next week jeremy tracy uh tracy crokinole boards to talk about uh a game that i think is slightly better than 18 Chesapeake, and that's Crokinole, the classic. Completely different kind of game, though. Totally different game. Probably the same amount of teach time, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. If, if you turned 18 Chesapeake or 18XX into a dexterity game, a whole thing, a lot of things bad. My teach happened. is practically a dexterity game at this point, so <laughs> don't worry. Um, also coming up, by the way, is a first for this channel. Uh, we have a bunch of live plays, uh, sorry, uh, live teaches, live uh, chats and conversations with people. Uh, tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is going to be a first for this channel where there will be a live play of a board game. And that game is Three Sisters by Motor Cities Games. Uh, so come take a look at that. That's the next thing that happens tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yep. Uh, but aside from that, if you like what you saw and are looking forward to anything else we have on the way, such as, you know, the creator's corner with the designer of this game or that live play, uh, please consider liking, subscribing to this channel. That would help immensely. And we will be forever grateful. Yeah, um, if, if you didn't like it, you give a thumbs down and we won't know because Facebook, I mean, YouTube took out their thumbs down meter. So we won't oh, know. they did. We won't know if you thumbs us down. Uh, again, thank you very much, Espen, and thank you for watching, everyone. Um, and until then, uh, thanks for coming aboard the Tabletop Express, and choo -choo. have a good night.